Have you ever read The Time Machine by H.G. Wells? You know, the same guy who wrote The War of the Worlds and The Invisible Man? Like his other works, The Time Machine is a story of science fiction and adventure. In the story, the protagonist, or time traveler, builds a time machine and travels far into the distant future on Earth. Here, when, and where, he meets two new species of humanoids, the Aloi, who are small, childlike adults that live on the surface, and the hideous Morlocks, ape-like creatures that live in the darkness underground. I don't want to spoil the end of the book or any of the movies that have come from it, because it's a classic story and really quite good. But along the way, there's a great scene in which the protagonist jumps much further into the future. Again, where and when he sees the last living things on a dying planet. He observes the world as it ceases to rotate, as the sun grows larger, redder, dimmer, as the last life forms die away, leaving a cold, barren planet. All things considered, it's a fun read and an excellent story. It's also been adapted into four movies, and most importantly, the time machine has been responsible for popularizing the idea of, well, time machines. The novella is largely credited with popularizing the concept of time travel, which has become a stable of literature and film. But what if I were to tell you that time travel wasn't science fiction, that you could make the time traveler's journey in the other direction, backward through time? Instead of seeing the end of our planet, you could see its origin and all the changes that have happened on Earth since it first came to be. What would the Earth look like at each point in time? How would it differ from the world today? What if we could go back to the beginning and experience all of it? Historical geology is backward time travel. It is the field of science dedicated to all of the changes that have occurred on Earth since our planet first formed. It involves work by scientists doing research in a variety of areas. Geology, yes, but also biology and ecology, physics and climate, water and air. These scientists are interested in a great many things. How old is the Earth exactly, and when did it form? When did life first appear on our planet, and why? What were the environments like on our world at that time? And when did the plants and animals evolve on our world? When did life get big? How have the land masses moved over time? How has the ocean risen and fallen over the eons? And how are any or all of these things related to Earth's ever-changing climate? So how does one actually travel through time into the past? Imagine pouring sands of various colors into a glass or some other sort of container. By pouring the sand into the glass, you are actually moving it or depositing it in a new location. As you begin to change the colors, you notice that there are different layers forming in your container. These layers record the sequence of events as you change going from black to white to brown and so forth. Even if you didn't pour the sand yourself, you could figure out the sequence of events. White must have been poured after black because it is above it. It's simple reasoning. Now, for historical geology, let's shift our attention to some of the oldest things on the planet. Rocks, the building blocks of our world. Historical geology requires an understanding of how these things form and why they are, well, the way they are today. When rocks form, they do so following a sequence of events. Indeed, like the sand in our example, 
They are often laid down in layers called strata. When we first look at rocks in the real world, we don't necessarily know the sequence of events involved in their formation. But as we look closer and begin to collect data and observations and think carefully about what we are seeing, we can begin to see all the events that had happened in the past. Let's think about rocks if they were something a bit more familiar to you. Let's use cake as an example. Even if you weren't a baker, even if you didn't know the recipe for a cake or how to prepare a tiered cake, you could still figure out the sequence of events, right? The baker obviously got all the ingredients together, then mixed them together and baked them. The lowest layer obviously went down before the highest layer and the icing and sprinkles must have been added last. Now let's return our attention to rocks. The same idea applies to big outcrops and exposures of rocks, wherever they may be. You may not know the exact recipe for those rocks. You may even overlook a step or two that was necessary for their formation. But by looking at all of the characteristics of those rocks, we can piece together a sequence of events. Armed with this knowledge, scientists have used all of the rocks on Earth, the geological record, to look backward in time. You will often hear the term geologic time in historical geology. This term recognizes that the history of our planet spans billions of years, and some things happen on very long timescales. The Earth is more than four and a half billion years old. Animals have existed on our planet for over 550 million years, and humans as a species have existed for just over 100,000 years. If Earth history were a 12-hour clock and all of the major evolutionary events were marked out chronologically, humans would represent less than one second of those 12 hours. We represent just a moment in the long life of our planet. It is important at times to pause and recognize how awe-inspiring 4.6 billion years actually is. Geologic time is jaw-dropping. To make the study of Earth history easier for everyone, scientists have spent the last few centuries putting together a geologic time scale, a system of chronological dating that relates rocks to time. Rather than saying a dinosaur lived between 145 and 200 million years ago, we say that it lived during the Jurassic period. We know that the dinosaur lived during the Jurassic period because its fossils occur in rocks. And by looking at those rocks and studying the sequence of events that they record, we know that they formed in Jurassic times. As you venture deeper, into your learning about historical geology, you will gain a deeper and better understanding of the methods used to construct the geologic timescale and to piece together the history of our planet. These methods include things like carbon dating. In the meantime, try and remember this. Time travel is real and it doesn't require any technology. All you need are rocks and a bit of critical reasoning.